behind this uh, door leads to a shadowy past in World War II. Let's go explore. Good morning. And uh, not far off the village of um, Kimber in Kidderminster, UK, United Kingdom. And I'm outside a place called Drake Law Tunnels. Uh, Drake Law Tunnels was formulated or dug out or blasted in the Second World War to form a, a shadow factory. So, what we'll do, we'll go through the caves itself, or I should say the tunnels itself, and I'll give you a bit of history as we go along. And uh, hopefully, you'll see what I can see. So come along and have a look at uh, the history and the viewing of Drakelow Tunnels. And as you can see behind me, I'm with a group of people. Drakelow, you just can't go in. You can't really do any... You can do urban, urban exploring like I'm going to do today. But normally, the uh, the old tours for small groups of people. In this case, I've managed to get on the photography one of it. So that means basically I can wander wherever I want. So hopefully I'm going to try and explore as much of these caves as I possibly can. So we're just waiting now <coughs> for all the rest of the group to turn up. We have a little safety meeting and then we can go wandering and uh, explore the, um, the tunnels themselves. Besides the um, Second World War stuff that it was originally intended for, after the war it became a nuclear uh, bunker uh, and it was all rearranged and changed to suit for a, a general um, I think committee of this area in case of nuclear attack so we'll see some of that as well. In 1940, in the Second World War, this um, sandstone lump of <laughs> rock was, ch was, to, was basically dug out to form what they call a shadow factory uh, for Rover. Now uh, shadow factory basically is, um, it's not shadowy, it's, uh, it's identical factory uh, at the time when Rob was making engines for aeroplanes, uh, that was duplicated underground just in case then factories were destroyed and then production would stop. So in this case, if they were destroyed, especially around the Birmingham and Coventry area, then at least they could carry on building, in this case, aeroplane engines uh, for I think it was the um, Blenheim and the um, Sunderland flying boat. Now after the war, um, some of these tunnels were refurbed for um, when the uh, Cold War started. So some parts of this, um, these tunnels on the rear were um, used for uh, a nuclear um, base. And I think it was designed to fit a regional government in case we were ever attacked by you know, nuclear weapons, basically. And they could carry on running the country, a part of the country from under these tunnels. So we'll see that as well. That's a, that's a fair lot that, isn't it? It's a small bomb blast door though, it's not as big as uh, I've seen. So we've um, come through Adit A on the map uh, and as we go along through the tunnels I'll point out uh, on the map to put an overlay on the, uh, the video of where we are and what we can see there. Yeah, we're just going waiting for a, an health and safety talk and a quick route around and show you what the do's and don'ts of the place. Uh, it just covers them. When you come through the entrance you've got to sign a, a waiver form saying if you die then that's your fault and then uh, pay your money. In this case it's a photography um, group we can mooch wherever we want, we've got to pay a bit more, it's about 40 quid, which sounds a lot expensive, but if you if it's usually for the preservation of this place, so fine, and it doesn't bother me at all. I think if you come and get on one of the uh, the tours, it's about 10 quid each, something like that. I'll put some details at the bottom of the video in the link in the uh, description, you can find it yourself, and if you want to come, then at least you know what you're going to look at. Uh, you also get a, a number, uh, this I'm assuming is associated to you, so if you go missing at the end of the uh, the day when they're closing up, then hopefully they could come and find you if you do get lost or you get injured, whichever it may, it may be. Mm. 
This is uh, one of two engines that are running at the moment. This one's not running, the back one or one behind me is, but it's so noisy, hopefully you can hear me. This is the oil tank, or diesel tank that runs the two engines, you can hear me a bit better now. Uh, the two engines that I think produce to um, power the actual place itself. All right, okay, so it's using to switch the electrics all the way through the actual plant itself. Yeah, there's one switch in there, just on that little white box. Yeah. Uh, that's it. That, that controls all the electric for everything. Does it really? Then it's all for wired in through that, that one green box. So we just looked at the engine room. I'm just walking down one of the uh, tunnels uh, with the ducting in. Um, it doesn't have a name on it, but I'll point out on the overlay what about some walking down, and then you can um, you can give you uh, give yourself an idea of where I am on the map. There's no word for this. I don't know what uh, what this area is just off the tunnel that I'm in, uh, but you can see where it's been cut out and with the uh, pneumatic tools actually. Initially it was blasted out, all these tunnels, and eventually they came to shape it by pneumatic drills, chisels, uh, to get this shape. You see it's self-supporting because sandstone's quite good at supporting itself. If you've ever, ever been to any tunnels uh, in the UK or anywhere in the world and it's sandstone, you'll find it's just like this, as such as supporting itself. Well, you can see the ventilation duct in here. Uh, I don't know how far this stretches. It'll stretch through all the tunnels, but how much they've got it going at the moment. The Preservation Trust will have some of it um, going, but obviously not all of it. So I think the deeper in these tunnels I go, uh, the less quality of hers going to be, but um, no doubt I'll find out when I get there. We're in Drake Law Underground Dispersal Factory. Uh, it's a shadow factory. As I said before, uh, the company that was chosen to shadow this this uh, underground system was a company called Rover. They were making engines for um, aeroplanes at the time. And um, shadow basically means they replicate the company that were already making the parts anyway. And in this case, it was um, Rover making aircraft parts, as I said before. And uh, what they do is they do exactly the same in this underground system as they would outside in their own factory. And the idea is, is um, especially in wartime, if they did get bombed and the factory on the outside of here had, was just destroyed or production stopped, they could carry on production inside this underground system. In 1942, the uh, Ministry of Aircraft Production told the Treasury that they were going to use Drake Law and dig through into these, uh, these, this sandstone rock to use a shadow factory. The reason it wasn't secret as well is that in 1937, uh, a German general called Erhard Milch paid a visit to this place uh, and he looked around the Birmingham and Coventry area and looked at the shadow factories and aircraft production and airfields as well. Two years before the beginning of World War II. A few facts about uh, Drake Law, it covers two and a half thousand square feet of underground tunnels areas. 3.5 miles is just up about five kilometres in length, covering 54 acres of this area. Work started in June of 1941 and um, full production was um, carried out on May 1943. Initially it was over £285,000 to start to, uh, to do this, but it was going that far behind, it ended up nearly a million pounds. Uh, the total cost of this place by the time they'd started full production in here.
This has got to be the Second World War stuff, saying avoid waste, turn off when not in use. The wall or something? But it's got to be something, hasn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it is some kind of electrical power unit, definitely. Right, it looks like we're in Tunnel 1. Now, Tunnel 1 to Tunnel 4 were built uh, to the movement of uh, materials. They were, let's have a look. They were 18 foot high, which is 5.5 .5 metres, and 16 foot wide, which is 4.9 metres. Hence, you can move quite a lot of stuff around here. It's an interesting room, nothing here now. It's a carburetor room, a carburetor room, I think they call it. It's where they, um, they sort of, if you want to call it, smelt carbon with metal to make it harder. And that there, at the end, is a ventilation shaft to get all the fumes that, no doubt, this, uh, this uh, way of, of um, putting carbon with metal to get all the smells and that out and all the uh, fumes. You can see what they've done there. They've basically shored the ceiling up and probably the walls as well with um, some kind of shuttering. I've got a feeling it's very similar to what my dad used to do down the pits. As they cut through into the rock, if it was a bit dodgy, well, in coal mines, it wouldn't be because that probably was a miner. And uh, they would shore them up just like that. This lab, uh, they do a thing called Airsoft here, which is sort of shooting each of those uh, with BB pellets, little tiny pellets. And uh, it's just set up for like a zombie type event inside the tunnels. I think it's just to raise money to um, help preserve the tunnels. Why not? It's a bit spooky in here, especially when it's dark. You can see the uh, the electrical connections there to power the uh, power these tunnels during the obviously 1940s and um, and the 50s in the Cold War. This is the entrance to Tunnel 2, it's been sealed off. Um, no doubt it would have been for uh, bringing goods in, goods out. This is a, looks like an office where goods in, goods out have been signed and out and then uh, they've been distributed towards the, uh, the left of you. Uh, to the um, front or to the, the, whatever they were taking to, to the, um, the manufacturers and plants. So I've got this exploring. We're in Tunnel 3 near the entrance. Now if you notice how it bends, like that, there's a reason behind it. And that is to have, if they have any blast on the outside there, it, uh, it tries to disperse the blast from ricocheting inside this building and destroying anything that's here. Now you'll notice that in a lot of the German stuff as well. Um, and one of the 
popular ones was actually uh, the ski sites, which are the V1s. If you look at, uh, I'll put a link onto the video I did uh, in Haresbrook, and you'll see uh, what they call ski sites. This is what the Allies called it when they were looking for these, um, these V1 and V2 rocket launching sites. And this is how they could detect the V1. They didn't want it at first, but uh, eventually that's what they nicknamed them, ski sites, because this particular bend. Well, there are the uh, metal doors on the end of Tunnel 4, which replaced the wooden doors uh, from the Second World War. They would be um, Cold War doors, if you want to call it that. Well, we're in the cantina, um, used for the uh, Second World War and the Cold War. You can even still see the, uh, the big baths here. The novels at the top, stainless steel. And some of this stuff here has always been bad steel. And because of the condensation of this place, it's going to pick up a lot of moisture. You see the thing in front of me, it's uh, all designed for a zombie attack. Uh, we're going this airsoft game we play. Interesting. Oh, dead bodies. Peak production, they had over 700 workers working here from 1943 onwards until the end of the war. These tunnels were formed by basically blasting out all of this area and then for the um, to finishing touches they had pneumatic drills and chisels to chisel it in the shape it is now. Uh, they took over four and a half million square feet of uh, sandstone from this, uh, from this hill. Uh, and further 620 other thousand square feet on the entrance are the entrances uh, to, in order to form these tunnels here. The Drake Low tunnels had a bit of notoriety. In 2013, the police raided this place and found something like 800 not plants, uh, marijuana plants, worth about 80,000 pounds. 
After the end of the Cold War, uh, this place was decommissioned and sold on in 1993. Uh, I, some company, I'll put in the um, piece, this footage, wanted to um, store something like 10,000 litres of um, wine, but the local council said, no, you can't do that. And the uh, drug, uh, the uh, the Drake Law Preservation Trust was formed uh, in order to prefers now to preserve the um, what went on here basically to keep the memories of people from the Cold War era and the Second World War era alive. So all the money that you were uh, plow into this these little trips here down these tunnels goes to the preservation of these um, magnificent tunnels in the mid fifties. Um, Drake Law Tunnels was taken over by the government and uh, changed into a region and regional government uh, offices uh, in case of nuclear attack. There was 325 staff worked here. They had dormitories here. They had a, a, a GPO here. They had a BBC broadcasting service. And if you go to other uh, nuclear bunkers, one in Hat Green, not far off me, then they've got one in there as well. I think it's just if we ever got attacked, they could still if people were listening to it, or people read, uh, looking at it, they could still communicate with the outside world, tell them what to do next, probably. Blimey, oh yeah. Were there all the keys were kept? That's interesting. I just be sitting here all day long though. <laughs> In a place like this, I'd oh, drive you on the bed, wouldn't it? Oh, that's all right then. Brilliant. Whatever you see. Oh, my damn. Found the BBC room yet? There's a BBC room somewhere. I think these are called Lampton tubes. You put um, little things, and they're still used today, these things, where you can send things up, messages through little um, little capsules, and they shoot all the way up there, and along to wherever they're going, right down there. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. She's a lady who used to work here in the business. Nina Underwood, is that her name? Yeah. Stone Lane Kinver, yeah, right? She's died now, we've done some research oh. since she's alive, but she obviously would love to have seen this. She has seen it, but didn't know. Yeah. Who's drawn it? Right. So it's somebody who's in the clerk's office that's drawn it. Of course, yeah. Because we haven't actually got that many. And there you have it, the history and walkthrough of uh, Drake Law Tunnels. Hope you felt you enjoyed yourself and hope you liked the bit of the history about the place. And um, I'll put some links on the bottom so you can have a look at, um, if you want to come here at any time, do different types of events, the photography one and the um, basically the um, the one where you they walk around with somebody and it shows you what's here. Uh, but thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again.